Be where said he's ready. Okay. I mean, as off key as that was, I think we all know what that song was supposed to be. Sir, that was perfect. I'm, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. That was exactly how the theme song goes. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, X Men. We're talking about it. And, a, and as somebody who has was in band and has a musical uh, intelligence and knows how music and instruments go, I'm insulted that you would think that I was out of key. Insulted. Oh, okay, great. Disres disrespected, even. I'll disrespect you. Hey, I, I learned it. If I learned anything from the Kendrick and Drake beef, disrespect goes a long way. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, that's Leroy and Michael. This is uh, the We Trying channel, a Nerdy by Nature production. And we got to talk about it. I mean, X Men 97, it is season one is come and gone. It's in the books. You can watch it all on Disney Plus now. Was it a hit? Was it a failure? Let us know. What do you think? What do we think? Leroy, what do you think? No, 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 no. I don't know what the that means. George, sir. What did you think? Because you, let me, let, let's start. First question, did you watch the original X-Men animated uh, series? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Loved it. Now, with that being said, you are not a, you are not a big reader of the comics. Nope. So you know about the X-Men through... The cartoon, mostly. The, the, the cartoon and the Fox property movies. Uh -huh. um, so... Let's start with you. As someone who is not a comic fan, what did you think of the what did you think of this series? I think this series was expertly done and I kind of see it as I think this is how we remember the 92 cartoon. Like with okay. Rose glasses. Um like if you go back and watch that now, it's it's fine it's nostalgia where it's like, "Ooh, this is kind of still to the it's, animation kind of whatever." But it's again, good. it's a product of its time. Mm -hmm. um, looking at this now, this is like it was everything that you wanted 92 to be. You just didn't realize you wanted it to be that mm -hmm. um, this had more. This had more adult themes in it with not even necessarily being gratuitous in any way. But it's like, oh, this is crazy. And it was such a soap opera in the best way possible. Um, just, oh, this person with this person. This is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It was it was so good. Uh, I feel like everybody involved in this X-Men 97 cartoon really cared. And they did so many nods to other type of things within X-Men property uh, in terms of like some of the some of the like for for one non spoilers, but there were certain things that were drawn that were taken from like X-Men video games like, oh, that's from the X-Men video. Oh, that's small okay. Capcom. Oh, that's X-Men versus Street Fighter. That's deliberately okay. that pose. OK, that's awesome. I mean, it's it's just these people loved X Men and just everything about that, and they just really poured their heart and soul into it. I don't know what they got wrong compared to what should have been in the comic books. You could let me know about mm -hmm. that, but I feel like this thing did a good job of bringing new people in. Hopefully, it lived up to the people who read the comic books, and I feel like it didn't necessarily try to hold your hand. It just said, "We're gonna be on this ride, and we're gonna do such a good job that you're gonna figure it out. We're not gonna." dumb anything down for you it's just this is this is what it is get on board so i'm looking for it um there's a couple of texts that i want to read but i can't find them but this between from, me and you no 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 so oh. sorry when you said the part about there were a lot of moments that you were taken directly from the video games or comics i was looking for the threads, because I'm not on Twitter, I'm on threads, where people had been talking about the show and bringing that up. So I was trying to find like information to back you up, but I, I have so many things on my phone that I can't find that particular thing. Um, Got it. The reason why I wanted you to start is because you're not... This don't mean as much to to me as it does to you, I don't think. No, no, no. I, no, think, no. I think this means more to you. I disagree with that for a different reason that you think. Okay. The reason why I say I wanted you to start is because the way you talked about in the chat when we texted each other and even uh, uh, Avery 
friend of the show. Um, it was, see, I wanted to hear what how you felt about it first, without the influence or the or, or me talking about it because I wanted to hear how you felt about the show without reading the comics with seeing in other words you have the animation here so you have the way they animated the characters the stories that they told in this finite series and then you have on the other side the movies that fox did i'm on record of saying out of all the fox movies i like maybe two of them i, I like two of them um, I only own, out of all the Fox movies that have done the X-Men, two movies. That is Logan and X-Men First Class. That's it. Um, so the reason why I wanted you to start off is because that's your, you don't own any comics. You haven't read the comics. That's your- Oh, no, 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 sir. I own that Jim Lee number one like everybody else. Oh. I do own that comic book. That is the number one selling comic of all time. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's you're probably right. worth nothing because everybody has it. That is true. However, yeah. comma, <laughs> it yeah. is now. The, here's the funny thing: it is rising in price because yeah. of the the MCU, the X Men, the the sh anyway. The reason why I bring this up is because your introduction and your your journey of the X-Men is through that particular lens. And as you watch this show, you're like, oh, they messy. And you're like, there's, there's, <laughs> yes. a, lot of these, there's a lot of big events. There's, and you're like, that's cool. And the reason why I say it, I, I disagree with your, your original premise is because that's the X-Men. And it was so nice to see you enjoy the X-Men the way I did reading the comics. So like you seeing that is what that joy and that fulfillment that you got is what I got reading the comics through the years. And seeing you get that information distilled in a small 30 minute episode every week dropped on Disney Plus was to me, just as valuable. And, I, and I'm not trying to gatekeep because I, I know a lot of people gatekeep are like, you weren't there with us in the beginning. And it's like, no, I don't want, I don't care if you were there with us in the beginning. You're now getting what we got in a different form. It's almost like, yes, we all got the same medicine, just different. We, we all got it different ways. And that's why I said, I have I'm, I am all for you, for people in, being introduced to the X-Men in this way. And I'm all for it. And that's why I, pre and I, I enjoyed your journey through this because I, even though I knew the comics, the beats and the things that they showed was all over the place. So even if you knew the comics, you, every week you were still like, mm -hmm. Like it really was that what the fudge is going to happen next. You'll be like, and oh, yeah. this is what Storm was supposed to be like. It wasn't supposed to be like Holly Berry. To, this is supposed to be Storm. Oh, okay. I get it now. Now, now so what was what was the line that Cyclops says? Give him the forecast. Oh, like God, that's that was fire. Or give him the weather report or something. And she, yeah, that was hot. Now do you see why I have had this decade long bit of harassing, I don't even want to say harassing. Friend of the show, Halle Berry? It, it, I'm not, and it's not harassing Halle Berry. It's harassing the people who come to us who are like, you will not put that on Halle. And I'm like, hmm. Now it's so like you get it now, like you see mm -hmm. who Storm is, and then you're like, oh, that's why y'all were bad, and you're like, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. and so this show for me was the culmination. My wife likes to get on me about. She's like, you like being right, and I said, no, it's not about being right. It's about not being listened to 
And so when something happens and it, you and, and and eventually you're proven right, it's like a ver it's like a verification of I've been telling you this all along, and now you've come to my side of seeing things. And that's how I felt watching the show. For like for this channel, for you, it's like now you guys see why people love the X-Men. Because for those of us who read the comics, this is what we've been talking about. And people are like, man, those dudes are annoying. And we're like, yeah, because that Fox X-Men is not our X-Men. And I'm not knocking it anymore. I'm not. I'm just saying that's not our X-Men. This is what we've been trying to get people to understand. X-Men 97 is a culmination of decades long X-Men storylines, plot lines, characters. Question for you. The 10 mm -hmm. episodes that we saw, like how many years of, of comics is that, do you think? I'm going to go 20. Wow. Okay. At least 20. The okay. reason why is because you started with, so you had, you had so many different storylines and little sure. things that were thrown in. So you had, you started with Xavier dead. Then, spoiler alert. No, no, no. You started with Xavier dead. That's not a spoiler. That's how the, the, the series starts. Xavier's dead. So you start with Xavier dead. And you start with Magneto taking over the team. That was like that M on the uh, Magneto's chest. I want to say that's from, oh, I, I had this all pulled up. And then my computer crashed. But I, I want to say like that storyline is like from the night, like the 80s. You see what I'm saying? So like. It, these little, little these little storylines, and I'm quite sure there are other channels who have done a better job of like, this was from here, this is from there. This is 20 years, maybe even 30 years of comics distilled into one timeline. And so I was just impressed that they were able to pull that off and engage longtime fans of X-Men and X-Men comics, and then bringing people like you along and getting you just, because there were times you would text me, you were like, there was no need for them to go this hard. And I'm like, this is just the beginning. And then another episode would happen and then you, you would text me and I'd be like, now you see where, 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 where we were coming from. Yes, we say, were annoying. I'm I'm scared for MCU's takeover of live action X Men. Why? Little, Explain that. I feel like animation is a perfect way to capture this stuff. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they did such a good job, and you know, in Feige we trust, but uh, you know, Feige has he hasn't failed, but he's looking kind of he's been looking kind of shaky. These past couple phases have been a little shaky. They ain't been great, and because the thing you've always said is. Once they once they start X Men, people are gonna see, and I hope so, because I feel like this TV show it's almost a double edged sword. This cartoon was so good that there's pressure now. This this live action has to get it right, and mm. I, I hope they can do it. I don't know. See, I'm on the other side of it, and we'll get and we'll, we'll that's a whole nother conversation. But I will say this before because because we got to get back to the show. I will say this: this cartoon gives me hope for the MCU. Because this shows you who the X-Men are. And I believe that going forward live action, because there was so much compacted in this series, you got a little taste of these characters' personalities. Now imagine this live, live action. And I think, excuse me, this bodes well going forward because you got remember the you know the reason why Avengers took off was because they were a disparate group of people who had no allegiance to each other who banded together to fight in a common cause and the difference is and I say this the Avengers are work friends the X-Men are family mm -hmm. 
And that's the difference. So remember in the Avengers when they had that fight, when Tony got into it with uh, Captain America and Captain America was like, outside of the suit, who are you? And you were, he was like, the bitch, I'm a playboy, billionaire, inventor, philanthropist. Like, that's the kind of stuff that happens in the X-Men all the time. You didn't get like that's that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. And so getting back to the show, I think the reason why this resonated with so many people is because you had the hardcore comic fans on one side. You had the MCU people coming into this from Disney Plus. And then you had brand new people who were like, what is this? Click. And they were like, oh. Boom. So I feel like it brought in quite a few people to experience the X-Men in a whole different way. Do you think the following seasons can continue on this path with like the main writer not there anymore? That does concern me. So Bo DeMeo. Bo DeMeo. Uh-huh. I, so uh, you know, let's back up. A lot of people... Because remember, he was let go a week to two weeks before the season dropped, the first two mm-hmm. episodes dropped. And a lot of people were like, this show is going to be trash. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of that chatter going around that this is, how could you do this? We still don't know why he was let go. We still don't know what the, the backstory behind that. Neither one of them, whether Marvel or DeMeo, has said why. Mm -hmm. Um, there's been petitions to bring him back. I am a little worried or concerned for season two only because he was let go once season one was completed. Right. Like season one was in the can, the writing, all of that stuff was done. I'm hoping there was enough infrastructure left that we keep that season two. and, And if they do get, subsequent seasons are able to continue this trend and being true to the source material. And that's another thing. The source material was well, was represented very well in this show. And that's what I think a lot of people got out of it. Even though you were not a, a, a an avid reader of comics, the source material was represented very well to where you were like, oh, that's amazing. Even though you didn't know the whole, like you didn't get all the issues behind that. So I think that was very well done. Okay. Uh, Want to review it and then get into spoilers? Are you uh, able to give our rating? Yeah, I, I would. I would give this a um, seven out of five. Okay. Yeah, I will give this a seven out of five master moles. Okay. Um. I give it a I give it a five out of five bastions because he is that dude. Okay. Bastion is that dude. <laughs> that that is mm-hmm. uh yeah some wild stuff man. That is that's an angry man. He's an angry man. He's, oh, angry man. man. I and thought the I show angry. did such a good job of making you feel for him. Yeah, I, I, I thought think it did I a good angry. job making you feel for villains. Like dang, I mm-hmm. kind of see your point. Like you might have been a little too much, but I understand. I'm gonna right now. But I thought I was angry, and then I was like, "Oh no, I just need to eat. I'm hungry." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "You, you like, you like when they're like, oh, eat a Snickers." Yeah, Bastion needs an entire four for four, five <laughs> for five. I, I like, I don't know what that that brother needs. He needs a hug. One, he needs but, love. Yeah, yeah, he, he needs, needs a lot of he needs, he needs a lot of love. He needs a Care Bear stare. Um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, much. this. I will say this, and we'll get to spoilers. We're about 20 minutes into this. Uh, so like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you comment, I will answer. doesn't matter what you say. I'll talk to you. Um, I will say this. X-Men 97 was the perfect excuse me, uh, vehicle for the X-Men going forward for people to see the Fox movies are what they are, but this is the X-Men, and this is what fans of the comics want to see, and this was handled. If you can recreate this show, live action, 
the Avengers will be the Hobbs and Shaw of Fast and Furious. Okay. Yeah. That's a phrase. And, and, and the reason why I said it is because Hobbs and Shaw is just a footnote. Fast and Furious has got 10 movies. Okay. <laughs> so there we go, folks. Uh, you were talking about, you know, Fox was his own thing and it tried to do this thing. Did you like the the dig that the cartoon took at Fox at the movies? I would I wanted more of it. Okay. <laughs> I, I was I, you know me. I'm Captain Petty. Yeah. I'm Captain Petty of the Petty Enterprise. Cyclops said, what you were expecting leather? That was that was good. <laughs> like, oh wow, so, that was nice. So not not just the dig. Wolverine was minimized in this. He was. Compared to the Fox movies, and that's the X-Men. Mm-hmm. And that and that's what the people need to understand. Cyclops, the respect they put on Cyclops, I was here for. They I did make Cyclops seem like, oh, Cyclops, you seem like a competent dude. You're kind of like a badass. Because the movies Cyclops, didn't really do it. Not, no, no, not kind of. He is a badass. Put some respect on Scott Summers' name, sir. <laughs> okay. You're right. Scott Summers, Scott Summers is that dude. He is. He is. Um, I mean, Hold so on. we're in, yeah. Sir, you don't pull one of the top three bitches in the X-Men and not be that dude. That's all I'm going to say. Well, now we have that. Who are the top three bitches in the X-Men? C- sir? Jean Grey, Storm, and Storm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm going to be for real. Jean Grey, Storm, and Rogue. Okay. You don't pull cool. you don't pull Jean Grey and and be a scrub. Okay. Really? You can pull Jean Grey and be a scrub. I guess, I guess not. That, that's that, that's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is if you go pull Jean Grey, you got to bring your A game. If you go pull Rogue, you got to bring your A game. If you go pull Storm, bring your motherfucking A game, sir. Okay. And Scott Summers is not a scrub. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I mean, so we're in spoiler territory. Where, where you want to go? Yep. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, so the first two episodes. Were, so let's start from the beginning. When when X Men ninety seven was announced, you let's be honest. You were like, eh. you were like, I'll yeah. watch it, right? Yeah. And so you watched the first two episodes. How did you feel after the first two? And when did it hook you? When you were like, oh, I mean, it it this it did it, it did its job. And I don't remember exactly when the breakdowns were, but it did its job for me in the terms of drop, dropping my draw, dropping my jaw at essentially every end of every episode. Because that first mm-hmm. episode is that when we see Magneto's like, "Oh, I'm gonna run this shit now," because yeah. Charles said it's mine, and I'm like, "Oh mm-hmm. God, what? This is the the mortal enemy of the X Men is going to run the X Men? That's crazy!" But he, but he again, runs the Brotherhood of Mutants, right? That, that's the comics. Continue, continue. Yeah, no, I mean, for me, I just, I, I liked everything about it. Uh, I think one of the things that really got me was, and I can't take credit for this, but I, I, I didn't originate this idea, but I can't remember who did. It was the way the cartoon showcased superpowers in, in ways you had necessarily seen. Like mm-hmm. we've seen, we've, we had five seasons of X-Men before, and I don't think I ever saw a use where Cyclops used his beam to move. Yes, like he used like the, the propulsion of his being to move across the room. Like, oh, that's kind of badass. I like that. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. It goes with the story. And and I think there were just other instances of that where people using their powers in creative ways. I will say this, and you let me know. So morph can morph into anybody, but does he also get their powers? So here's the funny thing: a lot now of that's just some shit they added in his cartoon. So morph is one of those characters where, in the comics. I'm not saying he's not existent, but he's not a key member of the X-Men the way everybody else is. And so okay. his powers are unique in the sense of you saw him use his powers, but then you also saw that he wasn't able to, to mimic the full potential of his powers. So remember when Morph turned into the Hulk? Mm-hmm. But he wasn't able to, to sustain it. And then you saw Jean Grey was able to use her tele- uh, telekinetic powers to encapsulate Morph so that he was able to use his powers a little bit more. So it was mm-hmm. interesting how Morph was able to, like Morph Morph was so good to the point where I was like, when the 
when the when the fudge did he ship like this person show up and was like oh yeah that's morph mm -hmm. and so i really appreciated morph and then two for the haters i loved when rogue said they and that's the thing that oh, about morph yes the the, the, yeah. the the pronouns i mm -hmm. like i caught that and i was like Like I slow golf clap, um, the powers. I will say this: you understood why Magneto, why they had the Magneto protocols, because Magneto when he got, when that's a dude when you piss off when you was like, oh, you're that dude, mm -hmm. and you saw from episode two, Magneto is that dude. Yeah, and and yeah. I really appreciated them showing us that but then i also appreciate it when you talk about powers rogue mm -hmm. i mean rogue was just when thunderbolt raw said we have a bunker meant to contain the hulk we good yeah it's like no that don't mm -mm. Mm. speaking of that it was awesome seeing other superheroes and characters that are part of the cartoon x-men universe Mm -hmm. So like seeing Daredevil, seeing uh, mm -hmm. Iron Man, Captain America, mm -hmm. seeing Spider-Man and not only seeing Spider-Man, but seeing Peter Parker and Mary Jane. Yeah, that was awesome. I was like, oh, my God, that's the Mary Jane from the Fox Spider-Man. That was great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it's just like, oh, this is such a big universe. I love it. It was. And now I'll, I'm going to go back to. So the one thing that I loved about this show was each week you got a different episode but you also got a different perspective on things. We started the show with Cyclops trying to figure out how to lead the X-Men in Professor, Professor Xavier's absence. Mm -hmm. Then you get, and you, you got somebody who was trying to balance being a leader, fatherhood, a husband, and then Magneto shows up and is like, hey man, I'm, I'm good, I got this. And it, Cyclops is like, yeah. excuse me? Yeah. And so you had this evolution of characters of Magneto showing up. And for certain people, Magneto's always been the bad guy. And you mentioned this early in the video before, before we got the spoilers. Showing us that villains are not always black and white. Mm -hmm. And I always hated that idea of the brotherhood of evil mutants. No, they're not evil. They just are extreme in their beliefs. And I remember, I want to say it was Nelson Mandela, and I could be wrong. Every, and I want to get this quote right. Every terrorist is someone else's freedom fighter. Sure. Magneto is a terrorist to certain groups of people but you saw why he was the way he was in this show and for certain mutants magneto was a freedom fighter for certain people he was a terrorist and then you got to see that juxtaposition of why he was the way he was in the evolution of the character when he brought all of the world leaders at the un and was like i need y'all to be better mm -hmm. i could have done this at any time and I've been holding back, but y'all push me to this point. Don't put like Magneto is the perfect example of fuck around and find out. Yeah, He's sure. The embodiment of that. Yeah. And so when you watched him go through everything he went through, you're like, mm, Magneto was right. Yeah. So, um, for me, I really liked the way they played with different genres, like the melodrama. I really, I really enjoyed the video game episode where they went inside the game. Um, I so kind of wish and Jubilee. Yeah, I kind of wish they had done. And this, I don't even know how you do this in a cartoon, but do you mm -hmm. remember that it was one of the Genesis X Men games where? You had to actually reset the physical console in order to make the the, the level go forward. Is that X Men Two? 
I don't remember. It's it's it was one of the Sega Genesis ones where like the, the level would stop in order to make you go forward. You would have to reset or do something like that. I don't know if, if they could have figured out a way to incorporate that into it. That would have been awesome. But that's a I mean it's it's a small yeah. little thing. What they did was yeah. awesome. I thought that was cool. Seeing an older Jubilee, man, yeah. they made Jubilee cool. And it's not that Jubilee isn't cool. It's just that she shoots fireworks, whatever. But that last episode, that bitch was bad. Now, she, had a, she had a crack in her freaking glasses. She shot that man in his face like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And remember, Bastion called her out. He was like, what you going to do? Yeah, shoot some fireworks. Like, so shoot, yeah. So, it, so here's the funny thing. And this is why, again, another aspect of the comics versus the movies and cartoon. So when Jubilee is introduced, Jubilee rescues Wolverine off of the X. So, so let me back up. The X-Men go through something called the Siege of Perilous. Each X-Men from that team is transported to different places. And so you see them. You The, the X-Men comics follows them. So the reason why I bring that up is because Wolverine is captured by the Reavers. Now, we know the Reavers are tech cyborgs who, human cyborgs who hate mutants. We saw a little bit of them in Logan. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, one day we'll talk about that, but that was one of the things that bothered me about Logan was you did not get more Reavers in that, in the way they hated mutants. Jubilee saved Logan and was able to help him get better to where he was able to get back to full strength. It was Jubilee who saved them. Okay. And so that's one of the cool things that people forget. People are like Jubilee is like this mall kid from the late 80s, you know, like Stranger Things, like that whole Jubilee's badass. And I think mm -hmm. that showing her in that way is kind of an homage back to those early Chris Claremont issues when Jubilee was a teenager and the sidekick of Wolverine and Wolverine looked out for her, but then taught her. And then she was able to like help Wolverine in certain situations. That episode reminded me of that where she was able to take the lead with Sunspot and be like, yeah, this shit is hard, but if I can do it, you can do it too. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate it those episodes and then that ending episode where we'll, where you got to see the final product of Wolverine's teachings in this young girl showing up in a big way. Was there anything that didn't work for you in the show? Yeah, it was only seven episodes. I need them. I needed more. It was 10 and, episodes, and I, sir. Was it? Yeah. Did you, did you, did you, did you miss an episode? No, no, no. It was 10 episodes. I just, in my head, I just, it felt, it felt short, like it felt short. Hmm. When you think about other TV shows or, you know, your network shows are 26 episodes, your cable shows usually are about 13. It just felt so truncated and so short. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. It was just, every episode was just, you remember moments like we haven't gotten into it yet. When they got to Genosha, I knew what was coming, mm -hmm. and it still hurt. Mm. Like, I knew what was coming. Because I knew in X-Men comics, Genosha always fails. Genosha's always destroyed. Mm -hmm. And we saw Genosha as the, you know, prisoners with the jobs in early X-Men years ago in X-Men 92. So like you knew we had advanced past that, but you didn't know what they were going to do. But you knew it was not going to last. So to see that episode and to see Magneto show up with Rogue and Gambit while Trish Tilby interviews. Um, I'm pretty Indian. sure, did, did Rogue and Magneto have sex and Gambit watch? Sir, we're not gonna talk about that. I mean, that did happen, though, right? We all sir, we were all witness. Sir, sir. So we're moving past that, sir. We're moving past okay. that. Okay. Anyway, I'm like man, fuck, that's that's a cuck move right there. God so, sir, we're 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 moving past that. But the Cajun cuck. 
so you 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 see Genosha, you see all the different mutants, you see the Hellfire Club, you see now I will say this that episode is a very big throwback to the Krakoa um storyline by Jonathan Hickman. Once again, Hickman is just littered throughout all of the live action and animated series that Marvel's thrown on screen. So we see the episode, and I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um uh was it remember it yes remember it. season one episode five um that episode and i'm not knocking any of the other episodes um life and death i like that was great but remember it was i think the episode that episode two Mutant mm-hmm. Liberation, when you had the Executioner, Steel, Storm, Powers, and then you had Remember It. Those, to me, were the ones that just cemented that this show was something different. When you saw Wolverine and Gambit, you saw him charge the claws. When mm-hmm. you saw Rogue in the dress, you saw the party. Val Cooper running up on Magneto and was like, how was a terrorist going to be a world leader? And Magneto hit her with that. Your world leader's a terrorist. And I was like, son, the lines from this show. Yeah, I mean, the cartoon in 92 like alluded to racial undertones. Mm -hmm. This show's like, no, no, we're going to hit you in the face. It was like, oh, dang. It was, Not just okay. the, the the X Men and the mutants have always been the stand-in for the the oppressed. Sure. So, whether whatever a group you want to label them as, whether they were people of color, whether they you want to put the LGBTQ moniker on them, they were the people being oppressed, and you got to see it and remember it. Um, Bo DeMeo talks about, and that's what the, 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 the conversation I was looking for, because he put it out there. He said, um, I want this episode to stand as you witnessing a group of people having unmitigated violence visit upon them and that feeling of helplessness. And he mm-hmm. references when, as he wrote this episode, the Pulse nightclub shooting, you got to see that in this episode. Mm-hmm. And I think whether it was Mother Emanuel, which both of us covered, whether it was a Pulse nightclub, whatever tragedy you want to use, you saw that and remember it. You sure. saw that and you got to see, and I'm looking for exactly what Magneto said. Um, I am. I was amazed at how well the this show handled the original source material, but then built upon it for a new audience in 2024. Yeah, yeah. Um, Does this now? Let me ask you this: As you watch this, two questions. Who was your favorite character? And does actually answer that first. Who was your favorite character and why? Might have been Cyclops. Okay. Cyclops was was dealing with some, he was dealing with some real daddy stuff. I'm like, man, he got to be a dad, got to be a father. Mm -hmm. You ever, you, Got this lady that's pregnant that isn't your wife is a clone. What? What? Mm-hmm. Oh man, it was it was good. Then you had to give her son. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was good. Yeah. Um, and what's so what was now, the next questions? So here's my next question. And it's gonna hurt. Do you see? Am I gonna start reading the books? No, I was that I was gonna ask that, but I'm not gonna oh. ask that. Okay. 
do you understand now why after watching this show and seeing the way they were able to craft these stories? Because I, I know I'm not the only one to explain and over explain how the X-Men are and the differences. Do you understand now the affinity people have for the X-Men and why it is like this, this fervent fan base, why we are sure. the way we are? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I can see it. I, I can appreciate it more for sure after seeing the show. And again, it just scares me for live action because I feel like this, this gave you the best of all the worlds of it was able to truncate so many stories into a 10, 10 episode frame. They could cut some fluff that they didn't need to, to get to the point or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that it's animation lets you be extremely detailed and embellish the moves and everything that you want to see. Um, and you, you kind of got to digest it. I, I know people had really liked Netflix, the binge model. I kind of like that. This was once a week. Yeah. I, I agree. I, something about it. Like sometimes I do want to see everything all at once, but this was nice because it kind of gave you enough to, there were so many things happening in, in each particular episode. You kind of just needed to digest it you, a little bit. You, you, you needed to sit with the episode. Cause I, I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Remember it. Remember it for me is like the episode. Like, don't get me wrong. Everything else was amazing. Which um, one was that? Was that the fall of Genosha? The fall of Genosha. Yeah. The fall of Genosha for me, and remember it because it it was a culmination of so many different plot storylines in one episode. So you got to see uh, Emma. You got to see Sebastian Saw Shaw. You got to see Mortimer Taggart. So you got to see Genosha. But you also got to see a little bit of Krakoa. And that's Jonathan Hickman's storyline combined with Garth Ennis' storyline. And it's um, not Garth Ennis. Um, uh, Paramount? Yeah. No, 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 no. Because uh, he's the one who brought the left. Anyway, um, you got to see a little bit of E for Extinction. So you got to see all of that stuff combined. So you got to see, so like Exodus walks through and you got to see him. And then you got to see the gala that they had, Val Cooper. And then you, but you knew. Grant the, Morrison. Uh, yes, Grant Morrison. Thank okay. you. Yep. Um, you got to see the fall. And then the prime, uh, the sentinel showing up. And no, the wild sentinel, wild sentinel showing up. And then you got to see them rally, the X Men rally, and you thought they were going to to turn the tide, and you're like, oh no, they're not. And that moment, I'm not gonna lie to you, when Magneto looked at Leech, oh man, like, hey, bro, I'm we not gonna lie, I teared up. I'm I'm not like I, and that's why I said this show outside of all the others you would have never seen that in the mcu you 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 will see that in the mcu now you have not seen that type to me you didn't get that type of emotion in the mcu till the end and you till the infinity war and end game and even then you rewrote stuff because remember iron man watch Peter Parker die and mm -hmm. then he came back and then what happened Iron Man died mm -hmm. but you didn't get to see a hero promise someone like that in all of those movies X-Men 97 gave that to you in episode 5 mm -hmm. where Magneto was saw the everything the culmination of Xavier's dream and he was like, I couldn't save Leech. But then he knew he couldn't save them. He protected them and then saved Rogue and Gambit. And that to me, like, that's the kind of stuff that I was just like, I was impressed by. I was um, enamored with. And those episodes, go ahead. So speaking of Gambit, so I guess he's coming back as a horseman for Apocalypse, right? 
that's the, that's a thinking. A lot of people believe that X uh, Gambit will come back as a because rem- they wanted to kill Gambit. Grant Morrison wanted to kill Gambit back in the day. Hmm. Um, now another thing, Wolverine's been a, a um, Horseman of Apocalypse. Archangel is the original Horseman of Apocalypse. Uh, so. I'm interested to see where they go in season two, but I will admit this was a pleasant surprise because I knew they were bringing it back. We saw the episodes, the trailers, but we had no idea this is what was coming. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it was episode five, and my character is Magneto. Okay. I, I've, I've always been a Magneto fan, I've, and part of it is because I've I've always identified more with Magneto because I've always felt like he got it. He understood as much as Xavier was like, we Magneto always felt like they will never accept us. And he may have been flawed in all of his thinking of what they should do, but he understood. And he even called Xavier out. And I thought that was a big moment. He said, I've walked your path. Are you ready to walk mine? Mm -hmm. And even then, this entire episode, you never got to see Xavier admit, eh, I fucked up. You saw Magneto admit, I've been wrong. Mm -hmm. You never got to see it. And I could be wrong. I'm quite sure in the comments, they'll tell us. I always felt like Xavier acted as if he had all of the answers and he was always right where magneto was like i'm messy um and and for me i loved his journey yeah i'm i'm hoping that and just based on what the show is i don't think they would drop this thread but i'm hoping we're going to see some type of fallout i know that onslaught is a character of combined of magneto and xavier but I'm hoping mm-hmm. there's going to be some type of repercussions for charges going in that man's head. It's like, man, that's a violation, bro. Ooh. That's, that's, that's fucked up. I mean, like I, I get the, in your mind, the ends justifies the mean, but good Lord. And here's the thing. Who does that sound like? I mean, that does sound like, uh, who's that sound like? Sounds like Magneto, doesn't it? The yeah. ends justify the mean. And so, and that's the thing that I think I loved And that's when you asked me what was my problem, that was my biggest problem. We did not get to see that from Xavier's standpoint. We saw it always from Magneto's standpoint of the ends justify the means, but we never saw the weight of Xavier basically admitting Magneto is right. The ends justify the means to get what I want. What I want is tolerance. What I want is acceptance. And Magneto's like, they're never going to accept us. So we need to do what we need to do But that ending moment where Cyclops was like, we need to stop fighting Mm -hmm. and embrace what we want them to embrace. And Bastion was like, oh, you was a sucker. Yeah. Yeah. That caught me off guard. I'm not even going to lie. That caught me off guard. Yeah. So is there precedent for what you want with the where for xavier where he acknowledges that he's wrong is that does that happen oh, in the comics son okay i will you don't get a spoiler here i was just curious no, I, i'm gonna say this and then we'll wrap it up and we'll say our final thoughts i appreciate x-men 97 for everything it's brought but i don't know if they will ever admit the way the comics have that xavier is not a good dude and that's all I'm going to say. Okay. In the comics, Xavier is not. I'll say this. Magneto looks like a Boy Scout compared to some of the shit Xavier does. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm not, and I don't know if they'll ever get into that in this, in this series. And I don't even know if they'll get in that in the MCU. But I, I will say that Xavier has good intentions. But he is very much the ends justify the means for what I want for my dream. He's very much of the dream is the um, 
you don't want to know how the sausage is made. Okay. That's Xavier. That's okay. Xavier. He's very much that person. And he's very much of, I'm willing to do whatever it takes for you to have sausage. All right. So um, are you going to read the comics now? No. Oh. No. Um, and it's not that I don't want to. It's just, I guess I would need to find out what I would need to take out of where I would carve the time to make that happen. Because comics, I respect them, but it is definitely a endeavor that you have to do in terms of just like price for buying stuff and finding the time to read it. That is, it is definitely a thing sure, that you I, have I to have do. A lo- I have a low cost uh, solution to that. What, the, the library? Boom. Oh, okay. But then, 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 then that means... Then that Let means me I would have to support the I would I want to I would have to support the library and I don't want to do that I don't believe in the library or books. Mm-hmm. That's because you're a hater. But for those of you who are not a hater, check uh-huh. out your local library, check out your local LCS, your um or local comic book shop. Uh, start there and read the comics. Check them out from your library. Uh, for us here in Columbia, South Carolina, the Richmond County Library has a great graphic novel section so that you're able to catch up and read some of the backstories, some of these uh, storylines that we saw. Um, uh, reach out to your local retailers, whether it be um, your your online retailers, whether it be cheapgraphicnovels.com, uh, organic, organic. Oh, I can't remember what the other name is, but um, there's a bunch of different outlets that allows you to pick up some of these comics for cheap, whether they be omnibus, graphic novels, trade paperback. Um, I really encourage you to go check them out and read just some, the backstory for some of these storylines and some of the storylines that you may see coming up next. Because the uh, the ask uh, the we saw in the season finale a group of X Men go into the past, and then a group of X Men go to the future. Um, yeah, that's wild. And Nathan's there. So that's a so that's a whole new uh, mini series, four issue mini series where Slim, Cyclops, and Red those are their names in the future, and then in the past you see Apocalypse, but you also get to see somebody who. I don't know if you guys caught that. Kang is in the past. That whole globe thing you saw, mm-hmm. when Beast walks over the horizon, that's yeah. Kang. Oh, cool, cool. Okay. Yep. All right, man. I mean, folks, that'll do it for mm-hmm. us here. For lots, lots right. of good stuff. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Uh, like, comment, su- subscribe. I don't know when this is going up. Maybe it's going up now. Maybe it goes over the weekend. I don't know. But uh, mm-hmm. click that bell so you know when we put up more stuff. You know about all the notifications. You can find us on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, Threads, YouTube. Here we try and uh, nerdy by nature. All those different handles. Uh, that's it for us. We'll be back with more stuff later. We out. Peace.